I have the responsibility of becoming a better person day by day. My dear brothers and sisters, in the gospel today, we find Jesus in his hometown where he was brought up. Initially, the people who were listening to him were much impressed by his teaching. However, they feel that he is only one of them and they say, isn't this the son of Joseph? Here the problem is one of over familiarity. Because they were familiar with him, they failed to see the full implications of his words and actions. For them, quote unquote, he is our boy. There is a general distrust about him because he is one of them and because they know him too well. It is interesting to note that the incident that is mentioned in the gospel today happens almost at the very beginning of his public life and in his own hometown. His own village people have been given the chance to be the first recipients of his message and to be the first to respond to his call for a complete change of heart and a change of understanding of who they are as God's chosen people. However, what we have here is a story of non-conversion and a story of hard-heartedness. Jesus uses two references from the Old Testament. First one is about prophet Elijah who heals Naaman, the leper, a foreigner, a non-Jew who was specially blessed by God. Naaman, the Syrian, received God's healing due to his readiness to follow the directives of Elijah, whereas the Israelites in his time lacked fidelity to God and they rejected Elijah, the prophet of God, and even persecuted him. The second is about prophet Elisha. People had condemned the prophet Elisha and thus prevented themselves from receiving God's help. Elisha went to stay in the town of Zarephath at a widow's house during the famine. And her family was greatly blessed by God due to the presence of the prophet. History repeats itself. Jesus is warning that the salvation offered to them today will be handed over to others if they are not prepared to accept Jesus. This warning becomes true after the death of Jesus and their own understanding of God and their religion had blocked them from accepting Jesus as the awaited Messiah. Thus, from the start of the ministry of Jesus, tension is built up between the Jewish people, some of whom are perhaps his relatives and village men, and Jesus on the other side. This tension will eventually culminate in the death of Jesus at the hands of the Jewish authorities. The people of Israel thought of themselves as specially chosen people of God and God's own prized possession. They would expect God primarily to be their well-wisher and savior. Salvation is their right or God is a God only of the people of Israel. As a specially chosen people of God, they feel that they have a kind of monopoly over the salvation God would want to give. In other words, just because they are the special people of God, they have a special claim on everything that the Lord has in possession for humanity. Along with it, we also see a sense of elitism among the people of Israel at thinking that they are better than everyone else. We see here an effort on the side of Jesus to separate himself from the mundane and overly biased understanding and opinions of the people. Jesus is not ready to mince words when it comes to the ultimate realities. He is well aware that he is not here to fulfill the distorted aspirations and understanding of the people. 
Its aim is to give a different outlook and help them to change their perspectives. However, the people listening to him were not ready to see this and were unwilling. In effect, he tells them that there is more to the divine picture than just this small world in Nazareth or in Jerusalem. Jesus was reading and interpreting the Old Testament in a way that went beyond the local and exclusive notion to a universal and inclusive perspective of the kingdom of God. This way of looking at the scriptures is unfamiliar for his listeners. And as a result, it is very uncomfortable for them. He is asking them to step outside the box and look at the world from divine viewpoint. Often, it's our experience that we get caught up in our own little pictures of God and how that God should act. Often we feel my description or the picture I have of God is better than all others. And at least it saddens us when others are not able to look at the reality from my perspective. My dear friends, the least we can learn in this season of Lent is to know and live in the awareness that our God is a God of saints and sinners, believers and non-believers, and He acts in the life of bad people as much as He works in the life of good people. In the same way, just because I am a believer and a member of a traditional Christian family or a daily or weekly church person, it does not automatically make me a better person. I have the responsibility of becoming a better person day by day. Our Linden observances can help us in this area. However, the most effective means is our openness to the grace of God.